Hey, I'm Lawson and I'm here with Jason and we're inside this Subaru STI and we're about to show you what may very well be the coolest, easiest to install digital dash logging display for track day applications. We've created some components that we think makes our CD carbon dashes the ultimate track day digital displays. These are gonna allow you to install and uninstall a display for both viewing and or logging capability uh, in a matter of minutes. First thing that we've come up with is portable power, and that's in the form of our new 12 volt power adapter. It plugs into your cigarette lighter or your 12 volt power source on your vehicle, and it does have a switch on it. The second is if you have 2008 and up vehicles, we have an OBD2 CAN bus input. That allows you to plug into your OBD2 port and receive those channels on your dash. The third thing that we have that make this the easiest dash to get in and out of your vehicle for a track day application is our new RAM mounts adapter kit. What we've done is created this bracket here and we supply a RAM uh, a ball that attaches to a RAM mount assembly. So you're able to go ahead and buy a suction cup or other RAM mount uh, like a roll bar type assembly as well as an arm and pop this whole thing together. So the first thing we're going to do is install our CD Carbon Digital Dash onto our RAM mount assembly. We purchased this RAM mount suction cup and RAM mount arm from RAM mount so we'll supply these part numbers for you. You're going to put that into one end of the assembly and squeeze it down and then you're going to take your CD Carbon Dash either CD5 or CD7 with the RAM mounts adapter bracket installed and put it on the other end and just tighten down the center piece and we are good to go now before we go any further we do want to put the GPS module on so go ahead and install that on the top of the car done and done and I'm gonna screw this module yeah. okay so the second thing we're gonna do is install our wiring harness it's a 12 pin DTM style connector onto the back of the CD5 carbon dash that comes with every dash too. This is included with every dash, as is the GPS antenna in the GPS enabled CD carbon dashes. This is a logging version of the dash, so for track day guys who want to log, you'll be able to log all of your channels that are coming in through the OBD2 CAN port uh, inside of the dash and then download and analyze that data in AEM data analysis software. Now that we've installed our harness, onto the back of the carbon dash, we have two CAN inputs. These are going to allow us to install um, both our OBD2 CAN adapter cable and our 12 volt power cable. 12 volt power cable is going to install into the AEM net port, so I'm gonna give that one to Jason, and he is going to give me the OBD2 CAN adapter, which installs in the A in, excuse me, not in the AEM net, which can two dose. Yes. Two can two. You can two. Two can two. Two can two. Can two. Can, okay, you know what? I'm just going to install it right now. Okay. <laughs> so we'll snap this one in here. And I'm going to give. There's also a switch on this. Uh, for some of you guys that have permanent power on your uh, 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter adapter, I know some cars have that, so we provide a switch too so you can keep this plugged in at all times and not have to plug it uh, and unplug it whenever you're not on track. It's taking you so long man I already installed. Hey you know what? <laughs> I'm just trying to help people out here. Power ports right there. Yep. Okay uh, all of the wiring is complete if we we're going out on the track we would certainly snake some of this up and tuck it up but there's actually a nice little center console uh, recess here on the STI so we could zip tie all this together and tuck it in cleanly. The last thing that we're going to do is go ahead and attach this kind of where we would like to have it if we were out on the track. The reason we went with the ram mount assembly is purely quality. This stuff is really really high quality and we've been using it in testing for uh, both our CD7 carbon and CD5 carbon dashes and uh, at the track, pulling over 1G on some applications, like well over 1G in lateral turns, um, you know, going over rumble strips, everything. We've never had one of these things come off. Super high quality. Uh, very excited to have made this adapter bracket for their components. Uh, we're pretty much installed here. We've got the suction cup on. We've got it tightened down and we've got a good angle. Uh, again, if we want to 
loosen it up and adjust it. We have the ability to do that, but for now, so Jason can see it, I'm gonna kind of set it right in the center here. And we're installed. So now that we've got it installed, we're gonna plug in and calm up to the dash. So we'll need to install our uh, USB cable onto the back of the display. So we're gonna do two things now. Uh, we've got the dash installed and we're ready to go. For your initial setup, we're going to need to pull the OBD2 port and bring all of those channels into the dash design software. And then we're going to upload our generic CAN OBD2 layout, turn it on real quick, and we're gonna see how many channels have matched up. Typically, most all of the channels that are available will match the template. And at that point, you can set your logging parameters and go out on the track. Um, afterward, if there aren't any channels that we do need to assign to the template, we can show you how to do that in a separate video. So go ahead and do the poll. Let's, let's do this in real time. Yeah, we're just gonna scan it. It's gonna upload. Then we're gonna on, unplug go. our USB. Okay, so it says uh, complete. Plug back in to our laptop. And it's going to ask if you want to keep or replace any of uh, the data set that it found. Anytime we do this, we want to make sure that we replace so that there's no conflict or missing data. And that's it. All, All right. done. We can go into our setup display. We can go to our port two on the can receive tab. And here we can change uh, the data rates at which uh, they're coming or we're requesting them on the OBD port. So things like temperatures you may want to keep on a slow uh, request rate because they're not going to update rapidly. Uh, but things like engine speed, ignition timing, boost, throttle position, those are things we want to set to our uh, fast data rate to make sure that we don't miss any of uh, the important data points. Now, Jason, as I understand it, obviously we can uh, record every channel at up to 1,000 samples a second, or in geek speak, 1,000 hertz. True. But with the CAN data coming from the OEM ECU, um, essentially we can set it as a slow, medium, or fast rate, and the fast rate is the fastest that it's going to come through True. Uh, that the OEM uh, ECU will supply it at. Correct. Okay. And Subarus in particular are actually pretty good about providing high data rates. Yeah, that's because they're sports cars. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Do their ignition timing, intake manifold pressure, um, mass airflow. Come on, man. Our session's about to be. Hey, here. hey, hey. Hold on. And we do vehicle speed. All right, we've updated that. So now we've set up our uh, data request rates and receive rates from the OBD port. Next step is going to be configuring the logging. Uh, typically, the way I like to set this up is based on a single input on-off trigger, uh, based on engine speed. So anytime engine speed is not zero or the engine is running, we'll be logging. So what that basically means in simple speak is that when you Turn on the car and the dash sees one RPM, it's going to start logging. So Correct. So you're never going to miss a log. Nope. Cool. And next step is to go through our list of channels that are available and assign a logging rate mm -hmm. to each of those. So, again, you know, temperatures will do around 5 hertz. Okay. Uh, things that are more important that change rapidly, such as ignition timing, uh, engine speed, etc., will do it around 100 hertz. Okay. So explain the difference between the data request rate and the logging rate. So data request rate is how quickly we are receiving samples of data from the OBD port. Got it. Our logging rate is how many times a second we are sampling that channel in the dash and storing that cool. into the log file. Okay, good to know. Now our data request rate, we're telling obviously, you know, RPM boost, throttle, all those things. We want it really, really fast and we're telling temperature stuff, we don't need to see you very very quickly. You Correct. can come through slow, yes. but we don't know how fast that rate is we going don't. to be. Now, That's vehicle dependent, vehicle and manufacturer dependent most of the time. Okay, so when we set it up for logging and we set up the logging rate in hertz, yes. um, are we guessing or is it basically telling us like this is your max capability of what you're able to log this at? No, I mean, if we had a, 
if we had a channel like coolant temp that's coming across one time, one hertz, one, one hertz, time a second right. from the factory ECU, mm -hmm. we can still log that at a thousand hertz if we wanted to. Okay. It's just going to be a flat line right, every second. Right, because we're going to be getting it a thousand times a second and it's only delivering it one time a Correct. second. Correct. I understand. Yes. Okay, so let's set up our fastener slow for logging. Yep. Go ahead. Gone through and done. We made sure to set up our GPS channels and with the GPS you don't need to log any faster than 20 Hertz because that's as fast as our antenna update rate is which is plenty fast for you to get really good track maps and yep. also uh, if you want to set up your lap timing and uh, predictive lap timing and things Correct. like that we're not going to do that in this video we just want to get the basics done and show you that you know in under five minutes really you can be out at the track um, and have all of the channels that you want to see on your display as well as being able to log them for analysis when you come back from your session Correct. Uh, to see what kind of improvements you want to make so Good? we've set up our logging okay one last thing yes uh, so that they're actually working properly mm -hmm. we can uh, set up our shift lights so if we come down to our shift lights and LEDs we're gonna auto create our outputs so what is our red line on this vehicle 6750 yeah it's a 6750 so we'll start them um, at so we have seven so if we do 6050 and an offset of a hundred mm-hmm flash at 6750 yeah and the cool thing about this is it's totally configurable so if you like it to come on and hit fast you can set the increments uh, on a tighter rpm scale at less of an increment uh, they'll come up and flash really really fast or if you want to have sort of a longer lead uh, you can spread that out and have a longer interval in between the LEDs so that they come on uh, a little bit slower before you hit your red line and they flash What do you prefer? Um, it depends on the type of racing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If I'm road racing, I like kind of a bit longer of a uh, lead in. You should be hanging in a gear longer. Yeah, than, exactly. Yeah. Whereas something like drag racing, where Very it's quick. a quick bang, yeah. then that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I like to uh, ramp them in quick. I might, I might have the first couple come on early mm -hmm. and then the last and then the last will we'll come seven, on so quick. The last four or five yeah, yeah. within about 50 rpm of each other yeah. okay all right now we'll upload this to our dash all right Pretty fast upload speed. We're already at 75 percent. Well, of this transfer. is this is a We're second there. transfer because we made the uh, layout downloadable. So uh, yeah. if you make it so that you can't download, it will uh, go a lot faster. Cool. Okay. All right. So now we should be ready to go. Yeah. Uh, we've got go. anything that's got an orange needle on it is data that we're seeing. Okay. AFR might uh, require a little bit of playing around because a lot of OEs send that. Well, as let's turn a it on and take a look. What do you say? Equivalency ratio instead of an, a lambda value. So. All right, let's start it up. Now the dash is going to cycle itself. And we've got RPM. And we'll rev limit it. Cool. So it looks like with no adjustment of the channels, um, the only things that we're missing, which we'll have to check, is AFR, fuel which pressure. Which I addressed earlier. Right. Yeah. Uh, fuel pressure, oil pressure. And those may not even be coming oil across. Temps. So we're going to check and see if those channels are available via the OBD2 CAN. And if they are, then we're going to configure them for this layout. We're going to show you that in another video. So there you have it. Um, without any editing magic, we've uh, installed our CD Carbon Dash. We've 
uh, downloaded the OBD2 CAN channels into our software and uploaded a layout and we're ready to go racing under five minutes. So we hope you can see for yourself why the CD Carbon Digital Dash is the ultimate track day racing display. Hello. Hey. Dude, we're in the middle of a video, fellas. <sighs> it's a good thing he owns a company. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Electronics.com. <laughs>